I don't know what's scarier, Carnage or Marvel Legends actually making a decent Carnage figure. Returning to my abusive relationship with Marvel Legends, I came across the Target exclusive Carnage figure that is embedded into this retro card version that has the animated series logo and the aesthetic and I'm a sucker for the big saturated colors that these retro cards have and admittedly it speaks to my nostalgic ties to that animated series. And so looking at the figure and thinking well it's going for that traditional 25 bucks did Marvel Legends do something to at least appease me in terms of delivering on a pretty modest Carnage figure since out of all of the rogues gallery of villains for Spider-Man, Carnage along with Venom go hand in hand as one of my favorites. And lo and behold, as I pulled him out of the box, kind of handled him a little bit and thought to myself, okay, from the get-go I knew that I was going to be doing a comparison to the initial Mafex figure because you know how I've sort of over the course of the past couple of years migrated from Marvel Legends to Mafex in terms of getting that 6 inch to maybe 7 inch but predominantly 6 inch Spider-Man figure fix as far as those figures that I'm willing to pay a little bit extra if it means that I'm going to be getting something a bit, a bit of a bigger quality but things got a little testy you know the waters got a little rough when it came to this specific Mafex Carnage since in that video I mentioned that this is technically a reissue that I got after the original release and there was a little bit of a period where some of these Mafex reissues were having some pretty consistent QC problems and my carnage unfortunately was affected by that. I'd argue that one of the biggest problems and not the biggest problem would have to be Jesus that arm you guys can literally hear it right there it's pretty audible it got sticky and I know that over the time I've seen some comments of people mentioning about the shock oil or maybe some dishwater and with some soap, some extra soap in there to kind of get it to move. And that's actually worked with some other figures, whether it be from Mafex or ACH Figure Arts. There are probably the two biggest culprits when it comes to this problem. But I just feel like for the amount of money that you're paying, just to be able to move some of those joints, whether it be the arms or the legs, but predominantly the arms because this isn't the only guy that I've had to deal with this. And going over to a different company, Figure Arts, like the Toby, the arm on that Toby, uh, No Way Home Toby figure, it's just after a couple of movements it gets stuck it's like it's almost like the figures have a bit of an expiration date into themselves and i'm just like yeah for an action figure especially one that you're paying at a premium price you really shouldn't be dealing with that sort of thing so let's see if maybe cutting out the premium price and going for something that's a bit more on the general consumer side at the 25 dollars for a brick and mortar walk-in like target this carnage can maybe be delivering on something that I wasn't really expecting the Mafex to do. Which, funny enough, is actually the scare factor. Carnage is meant to be a bit more of an intimidating character than even Venom. Especially since you take into account who's behind the goo, which is going to be Cletus Cassidy, a known serial killer. And in some com comic storylines, he's done even worse than just killing. Whereas Eddie Brock, he was just a bodybuilder that was vying for the same job at the Daily Bugle and Peter Parker took over and kind of got in his way and so he had a personal vendetta and so things were a bit more on the, I don't want to say tamer side but just a bit more on the relatable and somewhat logical side when it came to Eddie Brock Cletus Cassidy is a, on a whole another level he is worse so you kind of have to have a little bit of that aesthetic matching the character and I don't know if this will constitute as a bit of a hot take but frankly I'll be damned I feel like Marvel Legends kind of nailed it a little bit better than Mafex. Putting them side to side, yeah, they're both able to nail the right shade of red and the right hue of red versus the black that is contrasting on it. But I would argue that maybe the saturated levels is just a little bit on the darker or more kind of ketchupier side or bloodier side there you go i would probably say that's more appropriate to say the bloodier side with the marvel legends and then i think the the pattern that stands out the most as far as one of the biggest differences would have to be the black streaking where you see that on the mafex it's following like this very spheric kind of oval driven design that is almost mirrored i always mentioned this in the original review where it feels like they just took took one initial pattern on one side of the body and simply just duplicated it vertically in like photoshop or whatever and then 3d printed it on the surface of the figure itself where it's actually embedded into the plastic so it's an actual texture that you can kind of feel embossed onto the surface of the body and then they kind of painted those specific bumps 
to then be that black shade of like jet black to contrast versus the red. Whereas with the Marvel Legends, quite honestly, I feel like they did a slightly better job as far as that texturing because you could see how everything just looks like it's pretty much like lightning kind of coursing through the body. You see an awful lot of these jagged edges where not a singular area in the pattern looks identical to any other. It doesn't look like they duplicated it from one side to the other vertically or they did it horizontally or they just kind of you know rinse and repeat. Control C, Control V. It, di it doesn't look like they did any of that. And frankly, I would have to commend them on that patterning that I really, really love, especially when it gets a little bit uh, more saturated and kind of put together here towards the back and up towards the bottom leading up to probably the area that it's at the most saturated level when it comes to the symbiotic attaching to the body which is going to be around the spinal area that connects to his brain obviously it's kind of an extension of his personality so that lore wise you could almost argue makes sense and to be honest it's a fine little touch and as it kind of veers on over here to the chest the legs the arms I honestly love this texture just a little better than that of what was found on the Mafex right underneath that you can see that despite the color hue being almost neck and neck, like I said, I feel like it's a little bit on the bloodier side, a little bit on the redder side when it comes to the Marvel Legends. And beyond that, even though we have some decent tonification, if you will, some muscle tone happening with the Mafex, it's actually with the Marvel Legends, you can see an awful lot of the muscles actually starting to... I don't know what the proper term is, but when you see the actual fibers kind of stretching to look like actual muscle, like it, like the skin has been ripped off... Kind of like uh, we most recently saw in Deadpool and Wolverine. If you know, you know. <laughs> but basically, the way that that looked like is pretty much we can you can kind of make out just a little bit here on the surface texture of the Marvel Legends. I'll be damned. They actually went the extra step of being able to see the muscles kind of ripping and tearing in terms of the muscle fibers on the back, on the chest, on the lower back. Even on the gluteus maximus, you can make it out a little bit as you kind of lead on over here towards the bottom of the thighs, the legs, the calves, etc. So throughout, you could see that they really nailed on making this whole texture really work to the advantage of the figure and making the character look even more aggressive. And if that wasn't enough, I gotta be honest, that face sculpt is actually pretty top notch. Sure, there's a significant absence of tongue or open mouthness as far as being able to see this kind of comic infused aesthetic like the Mafex tried to do with a little bit of pink, whether it be for the little clenched smile that he's got on, he's got on his default head or if I was to kind of jump ahead a little bit here, the alternate head, which is meant to be kind of like a screaming face with the much more open eyes, but then the entirety of the open mouth. But you can see right there that it's predominantly just a pink, but it's still filled in. It's one solid piece. Whereas with the Marvel Legends, you see right there that they actually went with a open mouth that is entirely sculpted and chiseled in along with the teeth. You can actually feel in finger here. <laughs> see the jaggedness of the teeth are actually sculpted out through, painted very decently. You can see even a little bit of a flesh tone and texturing to the tongue itself, even though it's not sticking out or curling like it would on a character like Venom. But to me, it's really about that expression. Seeing the eyes kind of curling on here towards the top of the head, you see more of the black pattern kind of stretching on through through the entirety of the head sculpt. And overall, it just kind of sells a much more aggressive, menacing, and murderous, if you will, look to the character, look to the Carnage head sculpt that to me just feels just a little bit more in spirit with the character, even if it's not maybe 100% accurate to the way that he maybe looked like in the comics or through a specific storyline, because I feel like that's where Mafex kind of honed in on, is going for this aesthetical look that looked a bit more like it did in certain art styles. So it's going for a very specific art style, whereas Marvel Legends just went for straightforward, like, hey, I'm here to kill you. I'm not going to spare you. I'm not going to antagonize you. I'm here to rip and tear in the most sadistic way possible, and I feel like that imagery is completely sold with the head sculpt. It's enough for me to look at some of the things that I can kind of nitpick and criticize about the Marvel Legends that are very uh, typical for a Marvel Legends as I've kind of remarked on the channel a number of times such as the proportioning of the buck being very um, familiar looking as far as other spider characters are concerned in terms of the way that certain things are tooled together and pieced together, you see an awful lot of familiarity with specific limbs as far as the way that the legs kind of feel in hand, as far as the arms, the torso piece. But frankly, I would argue that this is probably one of their finer 
builds as far as quality of plastic. So even though the dimensions and the actual tooling and the design of the bug itself, I look at it and go, yeah, it's some of that traditional Marvel Legends stuff that they've been doing for a number of times here and maybe just giving it some extra premium uh, color scheming as far as what they apply to the surface to give it that much more aggressive black and red. At least it feels quality. When I pulled it out of the box, there's something kind of weighty about the plastic that I'm like, all right, all right, I can I can feel a little bit of premium added to the actual 3D printing of this thing that actually feels kind of like something that I would feel proud to kind of move about my shelf. So I'm like, I'm over here feeling it and thinking to myself, yeah, that actually feels pretty nice. Even better when I get to the hands that are kind of angled and kind of nailed with the finer blades at the tip of his fingernails in a very decorative fashion that is very faithful to the character and I just love the expression and the gesture that he's got going on with these very sadistic hands. Don't know if I feel the same sentiment when it comes to these extra very in the way tendrils that are kind of veering off his forearms and his calves. There's something about these things that there's a part of my brain that just wants to them, rip them off they're, I just I like the way that they're designed with these little like spikes to kind of make them look like little mini dragons I don't know what it is but there's something about the little characteristic here to kind of give it that symbiotic look with the little tendrils and then mini tendrils amongst those tendrils but the way that they're actually applied to the body especially when you look at the ones on the calves and you can d most definitely see how they were just kind of stamped on and glued there at the base of where they attach to the limb itself to the surface of the limb it just looks tacky to me. I don't know what it is, but I could have done without these things. They just feel very intrusive in the way, and I just have half a mind to just rip them off and cover the space up right there to make it look like uh, something that was just kind of sewn together and make it as not invasive and not as obvious as possible. But they are, in fact, there in case you kind of want there to be an added detail of life or characteristics to the Carnage symbiote that is attached to him, but I could have... I could have left it. And I guess that's a point over to the Mayfix, knowing that it's pretty much just one straight out, very smoothed out body where it's a little bit on the leaner side because Cletus Cassidy was known to be a bit more of a slimmer character versus that of Eddie Brock. But over here, they did add a little bit of musculature, not only because of the body use that they're utilizing here, but also those tendrils that are kind of like in the way and get even more in the way when you're dealing with the articulation, which is pretty straightforward if you already owned a Marvel Legends at all which again i've remarked and kind of complained about but it is the nature of this beast the head is able to rotate full 360 because of the peg but the peg is also on a hinge that allows the head to move upwards about that far and downwards pretty decently but just keep in mind it's a little bit on the snug side so you kind of have to give it an extra press i don't know if there's really any tilting which is kind of disappointing because a character like carnage i feel could really benefit from some gestures to the head to kind of give it a little bit of this menacing expression by tilting the head. So the fact that it's not really found there, it's a little bit on the disappointing side. Arms are able to fully rotate in a very ratcheted kind of way via the ball joint right there that is on a bit of a hinge that also allows extension towards the sides, even a little above the shoulder beyond the 180 degree angle. So that's pretty, um, that's actually pretty good right there to allow that to happen. But unfortunately, to my dismay, the butterfly joint, which this buck d does hold, I don't know why it is that they sculpted it this way, but there's barely any mobility when it comes to the butterfly joint. You can see right there, it definitely moves forwards and backwards, but I feel like I've held better in even within Marvel Legends. So I, I don't know exactly why it is that it's pretty limited on both joints. So this is more of a design thing rather than a QC problem. So I don't exactly know. I, I don't know. I feel like they could have done a little better on the butterfly joints. But nevertheless, bicep swivels are found there beyond the area here of the top arms and then you do you do have the two joints at the elbows that are fully able to bend the arm or at least the bottom of the arm all the way up but just mind that mine and there's a possibility that a good chunk of others it, they feel very gummy they feel very gummy and very thin and frail to the point where every time I flex at least the right one on the two joints it kind of feels like it's about to bend and just rip off because of the delicacy of the plastic used for the joint that's holding everything in place with those two points. So do be careful. And the wrists are able to rotate 
at the cup right there, 360, and there is a hinge inside of the hand that allows the, the hand to bend inwards and outwards, no problem. As far as the torso, you have that reverse hinge joint that allows the top part of the body to kind of bend forward and backwards about that far forward and that far back. A waist cut for full 360 rotation that's also a little bit on the right to the side, but that's really about it, so no ab crunch. We still have yet to come up with a way to kind of embed the two joints together to at least... Push this sort of whole mobility and articulation in a forward direction rather than just using the same goddamn thing over and over. But again, I'm talking to a wall at this point because Dan, uh, Dwight, and Ryan, you know, you guys are just mouths at this point, right? I'm sorry, but I gotta say it. Top leg, <laughs> top legs can definitely flex actually a pretty modest amount that far up and then extension towards the back. It's pretty decent, but the butt sculpt, which is really well done as far as that musculature, like I mentioned before, does kind of get in the way, however. Extension towards the sides is pretty decent, but it doesn't really hit the 180 degree angle as I would have liked it. There are thigh swivels, so you can fully rotate the leg at the top right there, 360. But you can also, jumping a little ahead here, rotate at the calves. There's actually shin swivels, to my surprise. Which is honestly surprising, but also most definitely needed considering that you have this piece. So if you kind of want to get it out of the way, you could do so right there. No problem. And that's a blessing. Two joints at the knees that are fully able to bend all the way up. And surprisingly, they're not as gummy as that of the elbows. So that is very fortunate, but they are in fact there. And then because it is a Marvel Legends, you have of course that ankle joint that allows the foot to bend upwards and downwards but you can't really horizontally rotate you can only pivot it inwards and outwards but thankfully because of the shin swivels that allows the foot to rotate 360 horizontally flat on the surface so that at least benefits some really good possibility as far as getting your proper footing in there specifically for a character like carnage where you generally do want him to look cool with the accessories that he came with which is automatically going to be the department that mayfix has marvel legends beat and that's kind of a no shit situation because it's obviously where you pay the extra bucks is to have mayfix just beat the competition out of the water and escalate you to the pro sumer tier because with the marvel legends there's really only three total grand pieces of accessories that are pretty typical for a carnage interpretation of any kind from any company of course you're going to have one cleaving accessory that you can swap out one of the hands with you have this peg right here that is technically articulated via a hinge and flushes very accurately to the forearm but as you can see right there pretty well detailed carrot is on over that pattern that i really like that's a little bit on the extra gooier side but i really dig the way that the ridges and the overall blade area looks pretty um uh, spiky and if i dare say so sharp it just kind of evokes this illusion of looking pretty sharp so i like the inclusion of that and then he does come with an axe which retains those same exact details and paint applications so that's pretty nice i just don't understand how they were legally able to get away with this <laughs> look at this and tell me it doesn't make you think of something else wow uh, I, I feel someone online needs to come up with a custom for another particular character from a competing company. And it also comes with that exact same peg that is technically also hinged, but at the same time, it's an axe. So I really don't understand why the hinge needs to even be there. I think they could have kind of not done with that. So I digress. But either of these accessories can be swapped in for any of his hands. So they're pretty interchangeable. And it's pretty cool to have them be posed with said accessories because it makes them look even more intimida intimidating. But if you want to give them an extra layer of flair to complement the tendrils that I was already kind of not on the good side with, he comes with an extra back piece that doubles down on the tendrils. You can see right there that despite how I felt about the tendrils getting in the way, at least they retain that design that I really do like with the extra little mini tendrils right here to look a little bit Dragonoid-like. So I do like that they kind of coil into themselves and again, kind of add this layer of menace to the overall character and you can simply take the back piece and just apply the peg into the hole that is right there on top where most of that black pattern kind of congregates and as you do so you can see right there that it kind of just adds an extra layer of tenderality that's not a word but i just made it up and overall i would say yeah it just kind of feeds a little bit of that effect even though Again, I'm pretty indifferent to it. And again, it doesn't necessarily take away from what you're able to earn with Mayfix for those extra dollars. Because 
amongst the figure in terms of the added points of articulation where you have extra torso joints that flex are able to crunch on the obliques, extra arm joints, the legs feel a little bit smoother, you have toe articulation, ankle articulation that's a bit more favorable than that of the Marvel Legends. You also get extra head accessories, not only the unmasked Cletus Cassidy head sculpt, but also the open mouth one that I kind of foreshadowed that before. But then you get a plethora of hand accessories, whether it be open hands, shooting hands, clenching hands, fist hands, semi-open hands, pinching hands with the index and thumb to make it look like he's kind of, you know, looking at you going like this or about to pinch your cheeks or the menacing clawing hands like I mentioned before. And if that wasn't enough, weaponized hands that come with like spears coming out of his fists or his fingers to kind of give you variety to make it look like the spikes are coming out of either, like I said, an open hand or a fisted hand. You have, of course, the cleaving axe that's coming out of one of his hands. I believe it's the right one. It's the... No, it's actually... No, it is the right one. So you have the right hand with the uh, cleaver coming out of it, but then you also have the left hand that has a mallet or a hammer coming out of it that kind of looks like a thermos, like I mentioned before. <laughs> and then on top of that, you have both hands that have these like little mini cleavers, mini kind of spikes coming out of them, Wolverine style. So, yeah, it's... No mistaking that the Mafix will give you the best bang for your buck as far as what's included in the box. There's no arguing that. There's no debating that. But then sometimes it's not about the bang for your buck, but whether or not you have the buck to begin with. And that's just it. If you don't have the buck to give you this bang, you still get a pretty modest little thump when it comes to the Marvel Legends. Now, it is a little unfortunate that it's kind of restricted to it being a Target exclusive, so it makes it even more difficult to find. And I fear that if you didn't pre-order, you might have a little bit of a tough time coming across this guy out in the wild. So you might be paying a premium in the aftermarket, but if you're an avid Marvel Legends collector, this is probably an easy pickup. There's really no way to kind of look past it. But if you've been a longtime skeptic like myself, then for 25 bucks, this is really not a bad addition to the collection, especially if you've been kind of on the retiring end of Marvel Legends. This is one that I would actually say you do get a pretty modest bang for your for that specific buck of being in the general consumer walk into brick and mortar sort of things and getting a retro card to boot so that it gives you that little bit of nostalgia for that classic animated series feel but at the same time kind of favoring to a much more definitive approach to the original comic book version of Carnage you get pretty good accessories as far as delivering on that showy very demonstrated factor with the cleave, cleaving hand and the axe hand despite looking very almost copyright infringing on, on the tail ends of th those things but at least in terms of the core figure I feel like it's probably despite not being the better figure of the two because of where your qualities and your finances lie it's arguably the scarier one the one that was able to outdo Mayfix in the scarier factor in delivering on what the character is known to be maximum carnage and that manages to claw at me and string out a pretty good and solid 8 out of 10 for the target exclusive marvel legends retro card carnage i would say if you can come across it by some miracle at your local target don't hesitate to pick it up because frankly this is where my personal negative biases towards marvel legends need to be pushed off to the side and objectively say this is a pretty damn good marvel legends that was able to even crack the tough nut that is me. Wow, the analogies are really crazy right now. The naive part of me would love to hope that maybe Marvel Legends can retain this quality for more definitive comic book versions of the whole plethora of Spider-Man characters from this point forward, but I feel like I should know better at this point, especially with every Hasbro Pulse live stream that I watch and look at and go, yeah, there's that Sunfire body again. What was I really expecting, really? I mean, especially with the most recent Vulture and Spider-Man 2-pack, that VHS 2-pack, and what they did with my boy in that animated series interpretation, utilizing that Sunfire body that I look at and go, God, God damn, I'm almost willing to pay the 200 bucks for the Mondo 1-6 scale. That's how much I'm needing for a company to do a proper animated series Spider-Man justice. And I feel like right now... 
the only true way to do it in the foreseeable future would have to be at the 1-6 scale with Mondo. And even then, there's still some hurdles to jump through when it comes to the actual quality of those 1-6 scale figures for the amount of money that you're paying. But that's a whole other topic. This one, however, is ending now. And as it is doing so, please let me know in the comments, did you guys manage to pick up the Target exclusive Marvel Legends Retro Card Carnage? If not, do you think that it's worth picking up for the price? Like I said, at about $25, $30 maximum, it's actually a pretty solid figure. But just know when to kind of cut back and not give in to the scalpers out there. Because I know that when it comes to all these different companies, I'd argue that Marvel Legends is probably one of the biggest victims when it comes to scalping. Know your limits, Master Wayne. Yes, I actually pulled a Batman line into a Spider-Man related review. Sue me. That about does it, guys. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. If not, hit the thumbs down. Shout out to our executive producers at the level 2 tier that are supporting the channel and this video. Tom Bowling. And you guys always know what to do. Stay humble, and I'll catch you later.